is a review item, Cultivating Communities of Wellness, Collaboration Through Research, and we have a staff presentation. Good morning. Uh, President Hummer, <coughs> Vice President Gilland, Dr. Arlotto, and members of the board. My name is Robert Rutke, and I am a junior at South River High School, a wellness school of distinction. I recently had the pleasure of speaking with the Wellness Council while they visited South River High School. As a student in the Global Communications and Public Affairs Signature Program, I continue to look at ways students can make a difference for the environment. Before I share my story, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the members of the Wellness Council and its community partners. Please stand and be recognized for your continued support and effort on behalf of the students and staff of Anne Arundel County. As you can see, this team of individuals will all come together with one goal in mind, to create healthy students and healthy schools while they cultivate communities of wellness, while they, commu while they cultivate communities of wellness. With me today are Dr. Aaron Hager, Assistant Professor at the Maryland School of Medicine, Ms. Donna Hoyle, Manager of Web Services for Anne Arundel County Public Schools, and Mr. Dennis Kelly, Principal for Old Mill Middle School North. We have amazing partnerships within the Wellness Council, but what we do cannot happen without the support and leadership from each of you. On behalf of the Wellness Council, we thank you for this opportunity to share the work that we do and for allowing us to move forward and make a positive impact on the lives of students, staff, and the community. Well, as you can see on the screen before you is the Center for Disease Control's whole school, whole community, and whole child model, representing the 10 components of a collaborative approach to learning and health. Not only is this the model for the CDC, but it is the model adopted by Anne Arundel County Public Schools Wellness Council over 10 years ago. Next, I would like to share with you a short video showcasing how I have organized my classmates to improve the wellness of the Chesapeake Bay. But before I show the video, I would like to thank uh, Lyndon Lehman for working every day to promote uh, South River High School's signature program, Global Communications and Public Affairs. The signature program helped me tremendously by improving my networking and communication skills. I'm Rob Rutke, and I'm the founder of Clean Creeks Football Club, or CCFC for short. I grew up on the water. Boating and swimming gave me an appreciation for the Chesapeake Bay, but I knew it wasn't as healthy as it could be. In the creek right outside my house, I could see laundry machines, car parts, plastic, and glass bottles. These pollutants disrupt the ecosystem and are dangerous to people and animals. So sophomore year, I decided I wanted to improve the Chesapeake Bay any way I could. I figured if the pollution was so bad near me, it could be just as bad or worse in all other waterways of the Chesapeake Bay. I wanted to clean up these waterways, but I knew I couldn't do it alone. I had most of the resources, including multiple kayaks, paddle boards, paddles, and even a launch area. All I needed now were friends to work together to clean the bay. I didn't want cleaning up the bay to be a boring chore, so I created a competition format and reward system to keep it fun and increase productivity at each event. Clean Creeks FC was my solution. Here's a typical CCFC cleanup day. A kayak is issued to each member as well as gloves, trash bags, and a life jacket. After everyone is in the water, we start paddling together to the cleanup site. This site can be as close as 100 yards from where we launch or as far as 2 miles. Once we arrive, I start a timer for 2 hours and we start cleaning. Depending on where we go, we often have a motorized bar <coughs> that we can put all our heavy trash in to save time. Members can scan the surrounding beaches, shorelines, and marshes for litter of any size and collect it. Members find anything ranging from cans and glass bottles to car parts and patio furniture. After the timer goes, all members get together and return to the headquarters to weigh the trash. A scale is used and weights of each team are tallied up. The group with the most trash earns a CCFC t-shirt or hat for each member. CCFC surprised me with how fast it grew and how many people appreciated our efforts. In just 13 events, we have managed to clean 1.93 square miles, covering almost the entire Road River and Ramsey Lake and we have collected 5,486 pounds of trash from the Chesapeake Bay. Our efforts haven't gone unnoticed. I have been appointed Keeper of Cato Creek by West Road River Keeper Jeff Holland and participated in an interview on Crab Radio. 
CCFC was even on the front page of the Capital Gazette newspaper. My goals going forward are to inspire other students to start their own CCFC chapters throughout the county, state, and nation. Chapters can be organized through high schools, private businesses, or public organizations and parks. Together, we can make all our watersheds stay clean. The waterways of the United States won't be clean unless we do something about it now. Start up your own branch of CCFC at your local school or park. As you pick up trash and make a positive change in our ecosystems, I encourage you to send me pictures, videos, and statistics to be posted on the website. If you have any questions, you can contact me at cleancreeksfc at gmail.com, view all our social medias at cleancreeksfc, and read the formal protocol listed on our website. Make a change today for the future of our planet. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, board members and Dr. Arlotto. For the record, my name is Erin Hager. I'm an associate professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and I'm going to talk briefly about Anne Arundel County Public Schools' most recent data from the Maryland Wellness Policies and Practices Project. This is a project that's been going on since 2012, and I had the honor of speaking to the Board of Education previously about this, I think about two years ago. So, next slide. Let's do the slides. Thank you. Um, so the project is a continuous quality improvement project that's led by the Maryland School Wellness Partnership, which consists of the Maryland State Department of Education, the Department of Health, uh, all Maryland school systems, and the University of Maryland School of Medicine, which is uh, my group of researchers. And our mission is to enhance opportunities for healthy eating and physical activity for Maryland students by helping schools and school systems create and implement strong and comprehensive written wellness policies. And it's a continuous quality improvement project because we collect data from schools and school systems. We then provide the data back to the schools and school systems uh, through these data briefings. We also provide recommendations and support to the school systems through our partnership. And then we collect data again, and then we share the data back again, and then we provide more recommendations and support. And then what we'll talk about today is our third round of data collection, which took place in the summer of 2017, last year. And then we provided feedback to the school systems, school health council this past January, I believe. Um, I do want to point out that the, there were updated federal regulations that went into effect last summer after we collected the data. So the data I'm going to share with you today was collected before those regulations went into effect so they can be considered a strong baseline moving forward to see how the schools are doing within your system in compliance with those new federal wellness policy regulations. So next slide. So um, I'm going to highlight some of the data from the school survey today. So this is a survey that was sent to all school administrators within Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And we asked that the person who oversees wellness at the school level, preferably an administrator, complete the survey. And as you can see in Anne Arundel County, we had a 100% response rate, which is really remarkable. The state average was 72%, so certainly much higher than the state average. And a lot of that really had to do with the, uh, the efforts of the Dep Deputy Superintendent, Monique Jackson, who's been an active member of the School Health Council and really wanted to get this data. So that was really wonderful. We really appreciate that. Um, and it really, as I mentioned, gives the, the school system an opportunity to have a strong baseline look at how the system is doing before these federal regulations go into effect. So it's definitely very exciting to have a 100% response rate. Overall, 92% of the respondents were administrators. And of those that responded, 82% were aware of and had read their school system's wellness policy, which is also higher than the state average. And this really, I believe, reflects the work of the School Health Council in promoting awareness of the wellness policy and all the work that they've done. And of course, Jody and Christiana are the leaders of the, of the School Health Council, and they've done a lot of work with awareness. So the next slide, again, highlights just a few, a few bits of the data from the survey that we collected. These are all evidence-based wellness practices. Um, overall, Anne Arundel County Public Schools were on par with or exceeding the state average in, in these areas that we are highlighting. Um, the first one, though, having a wellness team in place, which is a school level team that oversees wellness um, activities and policy implementation at the school level, was lower than the state average with 44% of schools have reporting having a wellness team. And I know that this is something that the School Health Council is working on moving forward to try to enhance the number of wellness teams in schools. Um, but with respect to the other areas, certainly the schools are reporting doing um, as well as or better than the state average. A few other things I want to point out is um, with the new federal mandates, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, areas that focus on public updates. 
and about half of the schools reporting having public updates <coughs> in place or having a, a mechanism to encourage the public to get involved in wellness efforts, uh, both exceeding the state average. And schools are also doing really well around physical activity breaks and integrated physical activity in the classroom, again, exceeding the state average there. And then uh, lastly, uh, we wanted to point out the marketing efforts in schools, which are another part of the, these new federal regulations. And so even before those went into effect, schools in, in Anne Arundel County were doing better than the state average in um, ensuring that only healthy foods were being marketed. So next slide. So I just want to finish by highlighting the call to action that we built for the state as a whole. So these are things that align with the new federal regulations and the data that we collected from the, the state, uh, again, as a whole. And we shared this call to action with each school system. Uh, we always mention that you, each system has the opportunity to set their own goals. So these are just things that are recommended based on the data. But I, I know that these are things that, that some of which are things that the School Health Council will be focusing on, building wellness teams, communicating system level efforts to the schools, and then monitoring uh, by collecting data from the schools, which is again part of these new federal regulations that came out last summer. So, um, so that's it for me. So. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Hager, and thank you all for affording us the opportunity to share our continued effort to improve the quality and well-being of our students and staff. For the record, I'm Donna Hoyle, Manager of Web Services for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Today, in celebration of Healthy Anne Arundel Month, we're unveiling the new Wellness Toolkit, now found on the AACPS.org website. The toolkit was once housed internally on the AACPS intranet is now accessible to the public. The site is located at www.aacps.org slash wellness toolkit. The toolkit was originally designed to showcase the 10 components of the whole school, whole community, whole child model created by the CDC, which is the blueprint for integrating health promoting practices in the school setting. We've organized the website based on the center circle, circle graphic, which includes the 10 components. All of the pages on the site are based on this model and follow a similar format. The one we'll briefly highlight today is nutrition, environment, and services. Internet connectivity issues. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully it'll come up. Um, the page has been populated with various resources for students, staff, families, and communities. There are also FAQs with quick links to additional information and past and future goals and activities. Um, action items and, and action items and plan for projects implementation in the future. The remainder of the pages on the left have a similar have similar information and resources. So, hopefully, you'll be able to see those soon. It is live and working. Um, the site's live on aacps.org, and we will have links on our ma main website from several different uh, rele relevant places to give the site uh, good visibility and ensure that it's easily accessible to the public. Um, we are very excited to share this tool with everyone. Good afternoon. For the record, I'm Dennis Kelly, I'm the principal at Old Mill Middle North. Uh, I want to close out uh, by echoing uh, <coughs> words that Dr. Alato shares that virtually every chance he gets to meet with his principals, which is the work that we do is about the people. Um, it's the faculty and staff that we supervise every day at the schoolhouse. It's the doors that we open every day for the students that come in. It's the parents and the community that we partner with to ensure they have the proper resources uh, to raise their children to reach their fullest potential. Um, but in terms of specific next steps, our goal is to take the 44% of schools that are currently operating at a wellness committee to get to 100% of schools operating. Um, it is becoming increasingly aware for the principals of Anne Arundel County that we have a need to provide a school experience that is balanced and provides opportunities for wellness in addition to the curriculum that we teach every single day. Um, we take that responsibility seriously and you can see by the, the people that we have on our committee um, we represent a lot of different experiences within Anne Arundel County and it casts a very broad brush around what wellness means 
um, from school to school and community to community. Um, so we look forward to that work. I want to thank Ms. Jackson for her leadership of the council um, and the work that we do from month to month. Um, and we look forward to our next steps so that when we present a year from now, our data has improved and the schools of wellness um, are serving our community and serving our kids in a better state than we are today. So thank you for your time. Rob, I wanted to say thank you. I was at the last wellness meeting when you presented your presentation there, and I actually contacted somebody and said, we need to get him to a board meeting. And they said, oh, we've already got him on the schedule. I said, great, because I wanted everybody to see what you're doing. So great job. Thank you. Ms. Corbelet. Thank you for the presentation. I, I really want to echo something that Sydney was saying earlier, that we've got this expectation that the school's going to fix literally everything that's going on out in the community. And I think the wellness toolkit especially is something that we need to share with parents and community members because we can't do it all between seven and two or nine and three. So thank you for putting that up on the web. Are there any other board questions or comments? Is there any public comment? So thank you all for all your work. And, and I know you four, thank you so much for all your hard work and your presentation. We've got two hiding behind the computer that have done an amazing amount of work on this over the years. Would you two introduce yourselves to our board, please? Uh, my name is Christiana Walsh. I'm the coordinator of Health, Physical Education, and Dance and the co-chair of the Wellness Council. Good afternoon. Jody Rissi, Supervisor of Food and Nutrition Services, and also I have the pleasure of working with this great team and a co-chair with Christiana and the leadership of Ms. Jackson. Thank you.